All right, here I am, Leon C, a.k.a. Morpheus. I just got through with a meeting with one of my successful friends and partners. And uh, this guy is pretty much of a struggle to talk to. Now, <clears throat> I want you all to sit back and learn something. And it's becoming a very common thing in this country of America where we have a habit in thinking that because we are so successful in college that we have uh, more degrees than the temperature and because we are brought up in a financially successful home that we are so fortunate and we are so smart and we are so capable of defeating every situation that we get encountered with. I've told you before, and maybe I might have to break it down just a little bit in this audio about there's a difference between information, knowledge, intelligence, and wisdom. Okay. Now with those four aspects or attributes to your particular mindset, Okay, with some of the various systems that you can encounter here in the learning institutions, indoctrinations and programs of your America is that they try to portray unto you to combine them all together, to think that information that's given to you or, to, or that you might have is a form of intelligence and that intelligence is a form of you being completely acknowledgeable. Okay. All those are separate because there are tools. They are tools, separate tools that you use to decipher the wisdom of an item, or you could say to decipher the actual fact and truth of what that item, that subject or what that, that particular, um, discovery may require okay and so i have been encountering and speaking to multiple people who was from the um <laughs> who have taken our college institutions a little too seriously whereas they are so smart they are lost they are so indoctrinated into the program of being a good agent smith or a pawn of the um <laughs> of the economy if you can say it like that or for whatever choices that they decide to make for the future that they are absent from wisdom absent from common sense absent from instincts or instincts is destroyed listen when you are indoctrinated on a general basis you have to be careful because your instincts become destroyed. Instincts is not taught in school. You can't get a degree in instincts. Instincts is the classroom of what you will call God. That's God's form of intelligence. Intelligence. Intelligence is a tool. Follow me. That's God's form of intelligence for you to decipher knowledge to bring into whatever action that is needed, which ends up being logical. The logical calculation based on your mind frame and the directives in which you are desiring as the core host and motherboard of your thinking. All right. And so in any type of debate or discussion with these well-programmed individuals who have plaques on their wall and uh, <laughs> consider themselves to be well endowed into the matrix system, okay, talking sensible knowledge outside of what they have been programmed to think is causes many conflicts. It causes a complete disruption. I've even had a, I even had a good conversation with the gentleman who um, was so well into his 
college system, we was all there. Well, not all of us, but I don't bank myself on it, nor do I pride myself. So I don't talk about that because it's irrelevant to the studies. But he himself have taken it, just as I described to you, over and above the unnecessary to the point where we talked about politics, things I don't get into. This was when there was a run between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. OK, we begin to talk about the voting. We begin to talk about how not everything is in the hands of the civilian, which is true. I brought that to his attention that just because you vote a thing in doesn't mean it's going to be prosperous for you. That oftentimes it is not the cattle that's going to tell the the cow puncher or the farmer what to do. It's usually the farmer himself or the cow puncher or those who are in charge of the cattle or sheep. Who is going to be making the decisions in the end? Okay. Whereas the ancestors of old, although they have indutifully fought to vote. Okay. Although it may seem as a form of power and freedom for the average people. All right. As I have explained to him that there is still some negatives, even in the voting sort of circle. Whereas it is not the end all and be all that he still needs to use common sense. He needs to use his thinking, he needs to use, use an instinct to know that there are always going to be loopholes in any system. See, his problem is he believes I didn't say no. He believes that he can trust every system that's created, that there's always going to be uh, more people using it for good than there is people using it for the wrong reason. He doesn't understand the evils, the possible evils in his environment. He didn't understand at all of what I was talking about when I meant that any and much of the power is actually in the hands of the people, not in the hands of those who you or other people decide to put in charge. Or even when it's all finished, I explained to him that when it is all finished, you have to make decisions for yourself. You have to be responsible for what you do at home. You have to be responsible for whatever the rules and laws that are passed. It's not up to their presidents, the country or whatever laws and rules that are in place. You still have an option and a choice. But of course, he couldn't understand that being such a well puppet, being such a well indoctrinated Agent Smith, fresh off the plantation. He didn't want to see eye to eye. He didn't want to understand and overstand that there are various forms of programs beyond the program. I'll never forget that that have actually ended the friendship that I was trying to build, that we were trying to make. See, this is the type of guy I visited him at his home. He needed help moving product. He was moving into it and he had furniture that he needed to help me with being so physically active and him being, uh, <laughs> I gotta be nice here. Um, the new type of men, sensitive, weak, very fragile. Me, I'm a man of all worlds. I'm natural, naturally aspirated. You know, I'm a woodcutter, okay? I am a barefoot walker. Okay, I'm gonna get down on my knees and get dirty type of man. Okay? That's it, it's with my hands. Okay, pulling weeds and things like that, being outside. This guy, a pencil pusher and a cubicle <laughs> potential type of guy. A guy who um, is willing to pay for every other man to do the heavy work while his body 
slowly becomes fragile, even more sensitive, even more weak and sick because of it. And so I look around his home and I'm moving his shelves around and his uh, love seats in proper position. Didn't look too bad. Pretty nice place. Pretty decent. It was fair for him. Not surprising. It seemed like he had things well in order. Nice infinity. Decent car. No scaves. One of the newer models. Impressive. Pretty good. A pat on the shoulder. And uh, I surmise this. I'm not going to draw out this experience too long. But most times, a person's lifestyle as well is going to depict what they think, who they are. And all I could ever think about when I remind myself of this gentleman is how much of a space bubble that he's in, how much of a well indoctrinated a civilian of the U.S. of A, or you say United States of America, that he is where anything could go underneath the radar with him. There are going to be any type of deceptive, schemeful system, and he'll go along with it because he's well indoctrinated in the I have a degree department where he feels distant from the struggles of the world. He feels distant from understanding the struggles of. Let me give you another example. And I'm, a, I'm I am going to cut that off right there. I am going to. That's what I do, because you need to follow my train of thought here. Let's go back to the Disney movies as well, because they they tell you the truth. As much of a cartoon you think it is and how much of a, a fun time you think it is for these children and maybe even for you. You'll be surprised that these Disney cartoons are actually telling you how people really think. And it is a program system as well for younger children because they grow up beginning to do that same thing. But they're actually showing you what people actually think when they mature. That is physically, not mentally. Okay. I'm going to refer you to a movie that you know of called Aladdin. All right, Aladdin. And uh, or you can even say the Titanic. I know many of you love that. You might want me to talk about the Titanic than it is the Aladdin, but it's the same. So in this Aladdin movie, you know about Jasmine being interested in, um, in that guy. I can't think of what his name is. You know what his name is. OK. And he was just a simple peasant. You know, he was just a simple thief trying to survive, doing what he needed to do on the streets of, um, well, whatever the name was. It was just on my tongue, but you know. And then, of course, she began to hang out with this guy, and he was so unsure about himself, but she was a princess in the castle. She had everything thrown at her. She could barely somewhat understand his struggles, barely understand, because he was two different worlds. In two different worlds. You know, it's almost the same as those who was bit, have been born with a silver spoon, born with fortune. Whereas when you tell them about how difficult the streets are, when you tell him how you need to be appreciative over the little things and make it work. Like, for example, a child who's able to get anything they want. They have they don't have to work for anything. The mother is always shining the light on them, not knowledge, shining gifts, things. You know, brand new stuff, you know, a car before they <laughs> a car for high school where they're driving that they driving mom's leftover car back and forth from high school because she decided to buy a new car and give that car to her high school daughter or son, even though she may say good, good, good grades, get A's in order to drive this. OK, it's still a fortune for that particular teenager. But yet, when you have to ride the bus every day, when you have to struggle to even get what you need to do, and mom and dad can't even afford to buy a new car because they have to use this rusted out Volkswagen, station wagon, family van, minivan to take you back and forth to school, watching this fortunate teenager or 
person being able to drive himself back to school is two different worlds. That kid have no ability of understanding you and your struggle. That is you if you are not able to get back and forth to school like that. He's in a space bubble. You are not. So you end up automatically being in two separate worlds, but you are in the same classroom. Whereas your struggle could never be understood. But you can understand them, but they cannot understand you. Because you appreciate things more. You've struggled for it. You worked for it. They have not. And they don't feel like they need to like that gentleman. Doesn't feel like he need to concern himself about the hidden programs in America. He's just a go along with the program type of dude. Vote because voting is good in his mind. Your ancestors fought for voting. You should vote. And because you are voting, you're going to be able to change the world. Okay, I'm not going to think about the effects of whatever president's going to be up there as long as there's a certain president that I feel should be in place, not that I know should be in place by wisdom, instincts, and the knowledge of history. It does matter. It matters what they represent. It matters what they will do. It does matter what's going on in the current country because it's going to make a difference because it's not who they are. It's what they represent at times. You got to think about the full spectrum of the consequences. People like him can't quite understand. They'll just pick a person because they just feel as if that person should be in place because it is a popular vote. It's a popular person or because maybe that person's history. But they know not of other details but that. Now, of course, you know about the Titanic. Same thing. Him being of a poor family, not so fortunate. Her being of prestige and great circle. The only thing that opened up her eyes was the fact that she spent more time with Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. And she began to learn that her little small bubble was a very small space in the universe and this man opened up that space bubble to different possibilities that she was not privileged to see and probably would not have should she have not spent time with him. So you will find out when you open up your eyes in this country, it's still the same. It still cuts right down in the middle in various forms where you have these group of people who are well fortunate and other people who are not and they have no intentions of understanding each other because one is in a space bubble the other one is not one is a one is struggling on the streets and the other person is is uh, warm and comfortable in their double layered home under a double layered sheet under double layered financial security But what I have learned as well, getting to the service of serving you and getting to the point, and you see the title of it, it's called too much information, right? See, one of my friends have, uh, just like this gentleman I was telling you about in the past, but there was another one who wants to find a good girl, a decent relationship. See, this this man is one I just described to you, just the same. You know, he sees himself as greatly successful. He he loves what he has. He loves his lifestyle to the point where he doesn't have common sense. He don't have wisdom or instincts. All he has is information and the knowledge of the information that he used with his programmed, indoctrinated intellect. But it has nothing to do with wisdom. It has nothing to do with higher instincts. So I'm going to share with you the interaction that we had, and you're going to learn something from it, Neo. I've already made the path for you. Now you are able to see what I am going to teach you. 
in his interaction with women, he does something that what some of you men do. And it cuts you off by the knees because you fail to remember not. Well, you don't remember. You fail to learn of the species because you lose your instincts because you think with your little head. And even if you think with your big head, you're thinking with your programmed indoctrinated head that you by the environment should be the blue pill white knight and not think about your own well-being, not think about your own health, your own wealth, your own protection. See, when I discuss things with this man about feminism, about red pill, about MGTOW, about women in their fight for liberation, which they already had, but they just want to go over and above and become dominant and take the place of a man. See, men don't, those type of men don't want to listen because See, men like that feel like he can buy his way through the court system. He can buy his way through life. He can just buy off her. He can just pay for whatever illness that she brings into our baggage, into his life. And he'll be just fine. He don't want to know that the struggle is going on in America. He just wants to believe that it is not. And get himself in the court system and lose pretty much more than half of his wealth because his so-called I am smarter than you because I have great master's degrees on my wall so what I have to tell this man is what I'm going to tell you men because I feel like some of you need to know this is you need to watch out for certain type of women even if you fail to <laughs> to know that it is all about what you have and not who you are. You need to know it, that that is a great possibility. If and should you have any type of interest in protecting yourself and protecting your sons and teaching them that women aren't what they used to be. The game is different. They're not the Molly maid that they used to be. You understand? They're not the dress West. They're not the dress uh, wearers that are more interested in making and helping to build a home. Okay? That a lot of these women now are born to eat from your plate that you make. First, she tells you how to make the plate and what she wants on the plate. Then, she will eat off of your plate. You say, what do you mean, Morpheus? tell you what to do. What is it a man supposed to do? A man's supposed to be shivers. A man's supposed to open up the door. A man's supposed to be gentle. A man's supposed to put the red carpet. A man's supposed to be protector. Keeps going. He's supposed to have certain digits a year. He's supposed to be healthy, so tall, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on. She wants you to have this plate, so therefore her chance of getting with you will be a lot easier because you made the plate and she'll eat off of it. You'll say, okay, Morpheus, this seems kind of one-sided. I don't like what you're saying. I feel kind of uncomfortable. Morpheus, I'm a woman, and you're making me feel uncomfortable because um, now you're talking one-sided again. Please, explain yourself. I will. Listen to me. I don't mind. I don't mind the balance because the balance isn't there. Otherwise, I talk about it. Rarely do you see on occasion where she has the plate and he eats from it and survives. You see, what you don't understand is that's becoming common and have been becoming common because men have been disenfranchised. Do you understand? You have to understand that your woman team or the team of the average American woman, okay, is running with this sense of liberation you understand and that is in multiple ranges sexual liberation physical liberation to wear what she want to wear do what she want to do i can be my own leader i'm the ceo boss or whatever so men lose their place whereas that used to be a man's place not because he was bombarding that because it was a patriarchal like you were led to believe that's a deception that's a deception and that's a lie Okay, that's a lie. You want to know how it's a lie? Let me be basic with you before you even argue with that. And I don't want to lose my place. It's like this. Just because you didn't have didn't mean that you wasn't provided for. 
Yeah, we do understand that there were some who uh, abused. There were some who left their women hanging. We understand that. There were some who were just plain cheaters, as you like to say, and left the woman in a bad situation. But the majority of it was based on if you can't do it, he will do it. Don't have the money. He got the money. You don't want to work. That's fine. He'll work. As long as you stay at home, take care of the kids. He would take care of you. You see, it had its own balance where it was giving, not just taking. It would be a different story if it was just all one sided, but it wasn't on a general basis. However, not to lose our place because I don't want to lose you. Should you try to bring up an argument? Getting back to the story. So because things have become overbearing and unbalanced and we don't know our limits and we go above and beyond, just watch the news. Look at what happens. Watch the divorce rate. Watch the relationships. Watch people fail each other because of their false sense of liberation. Okay. And because they've gone beyond the balance, your attorneys, your lawyers can tell you that. The divorce court will tell you that. Okay. You don't need Morpheus to tell you this. Maybe some of you aren't married. Some of you are married for 16 years and you can't even sell your wife, but you wish you could. <laughs> to go back to your normal life, to be free of the emotional baggage. But it can't be done. So therefore, now there's another plan for the wealthy, or you could say for the fortunate men who are blind to the to their sense of the ghost. Okay? Who just want to go along with the program because they are well indoctrinated Mr. Smith's they don't understand that their their lifestyle is lucrative for women who really do not have any intention of giving, but have all intentions of thinking that she is the prize, that she is the one that he needs to add unto his kingdom of fortune and gold. And so she begins to put a price tag on herself. She begins to put a price tag on herself, her life and her own worth that she stamps on herself. Not the standards of the society, but the standards of her own perception, which oftentimes, ladies, is not a badge to you, is a deception based on the low quality. That's right. Of the expectation of other people. Because oftentimes, if you do notice, it is never a I am an individual type of run. It is because every other person's doing it. I'm going to do it, too. That's right, because we really never truly grow up. Oftentimes, if you if you open up your eyes, many people are dressing the same. Many people talk the same. Many people pretty much do the same thing on one accord, like a hive mind. But then you have that one individual to say, I'm different than the rest of them. I don't think like that. But yet there you are in front of me with yoga pants on like every other 100,000 other women that entire week. How are you? How are you different? That's a very amazing observation. That's not an argument. That's what you can observe yourself. Now, with this man and you men, I'm going to give you some guidelines. I'm going to give you um, maybe three. I know I have two, but maybe three of them. That should open up your eyes. It should. Now, one of the things that you will start off with, and it seems like we're going back to high school again, and I feel very childish even talking about the subject but I have to bring it to your attention because I talk to people every day and y'all need to know what's really going on because you may have my you may not have the ability to be there you might be at work right now you're at home probably vacuuming your floor or maybe you're driving you might be just in your office and this is on your radio so you don't have time you don't have the energy so I am your arms and your legs. Yes, Morpheus is out here. And what I get, I give to you. Because I am a man of my words. I said, and I will say it, and I've said it in just about all my audios, that you 
are my most valued asset. So I will get it and I will bring it to you so that you can be better. Now, listen, when you first meet a woman or even a person, but I am, this is for men. Okay. Now I have had this conversation with the woman before and I told you I have way listen to what you say. I listen to what you do. And most things, what you say, women do not go along with what you do. What you say and do are two different things. Okay. The woman would always say, well, what about the man? What about the man? The man's doing it too. Well, that you're talking about a very short percentage compared to your sense of liberation that's disenfranchising men every day. Men are getting the bad end of the stick now because of too many blue, blue pill beta white knight guys like I just discussed with you not too long ago who was programmed to think that he needs to be a certain way to be accepted into the environment or society because of his lack of instincts and wisdom being spoon fed information, not spoon fed knowledge program indoctrination and indoctrinated information which only leads him to be an automaton over time where he can be easily manipulated and he will find himself yes married <clears throat> of course yes bound in the system yes with probably a couple of kids but his success okay will be parasited off of he will be limited by much of a default as you may think it's such a paradise to get married nowadays, you'd be surprised how many people will regret walking down that aisle. Should they have another opportunity, they will say, hell no, I wish I never met them. Now listen, when a woman tell you men, what do you do for a living? Stop right there. Stop right there. That is the beginning and that is the end. Now, in this introduction, blue pill, beta, simp, white knight, program, agent Smith dudes are the ones who will say, okay, I'll do this. I do that. I graduated from Harvard and I da 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 because you know why? Their identity and their sense of success is their plaque is their badge, is whatever that they have felt as if they succeeded. So they're trying to impress this girl. Listen, they're trying to impress this girl with their, uh, their so-called success. But what they don't know is who are they talking to? They're talking to a woman. They're talking to a woman that's not looking for real equality. They're talking to a woman who's looking for a future retirement plan they're talking to a woman is a woman of information where the woman will use that yes I do know to tack on to her information box not to usually give back to you men or how she's going to be able to fit into your world but how can how can she manipulate your world and what is it going to do for her that's why she's asking you She's asking you because how can you add up to her standards? How can you add up to what she wants? How can she get into your world? I'm going to break that down to you in just a moment. I'm going to break it down to you in just a moment. The moment's up. <laughs> Listen. Because what will happen is, depending on your experience, depending on what you do for a living, depending on uh, where you graduated and all this, she can actually decipher how well that you are going to line up in her world, how well you are going to be a financial stable man, a financial stable blue pill, white knight, blinded dude who's going to be at service to her. See, society wants you to think, and that is the society, wants you to think that, oh, when people ask you that, that's just proper introduction. That's just being uh, respectful of them. That's just, 
That's just trying to let a person get to know who you are. Let's stop right there now. Lesson number two. Lesson number two. Why should you have to tell them that in order for them to know who you are? It's none of their business what you do for a living. It's none of their business how many degrees you got. And it's none of their business how successful you are. The only reason why you want them to know that is because you take pride in your indoctrination program. Which is what get you men in trouble all the time. Which is what what have produced this audio for Morpheus to wake up and give you the red pill. Me being your pilot, you being the student. Because I get calls from men all the time. They'll say, man, I'm having troubles. Man, I can't find a good woman. Man, this woman just want me for what I want. Man, I can't get rid of these girls because all they want to do is be around my money. Then I ask them, how does he meet them? Then I spend time with these guys doing a pool party or a beach party or we go out to drink or somewhere in the club or something like that. Something of that nature. We hang out at a coffee shop and I watch this man interact with the woman. The first thing that happens, the girl says, what do you do for? For a living the man opens up his mouth and inserts his shoe immediately his dirty nasty corroded uh, casual shoes right in his big lips and then I'm thinking to myself there it is aha so I got to teach this man as I'm going to present to you when you encounter women our people First of all, you got to know giving too much information is giving too much power to the enemy to use you. Giving out too much information, especially to the opposite sex, especially today in this generation of women who have no intention of being the woman of your world. They want you to be the man of their world. They want you to line up to their list where you make yourself an asset to them and a liability to yourself. When you search coming out of your mouth, say, yes, I am because I do this for blah, blah. And now she's like, oh, I see. So you make this amount of money per month. Oh, so you do this. Oh, I do. Okay, maybe I can fit him in my program. Maybe I can dump the loser that I'm with because I love my heart pergamy. He's only doing, he's a plumber. I want this guy who's a attorney. I want this guy who's a CEO. I want this guy who's making real good money. So I'm going to get near him. And of course, of course, it works if you're just interested in donkey dunking because you want her to be near your money. But you will never find a woman of quality. You will never find a woman who just wants to be with you for you. I have done it myself and I implore you to do the same. As soon as they tell you, what do you do for a living? Tell them in return, I live. You will figure out what I do for a living later on. Right now, uh, Madam, Sarah, uh, Brandy, uh, Dashene, you're going to figure it out later. I will share that with you as we get a chance to know each other. Right now, let's just get a chance to know each other. That's too much information to give you. You don't need to know what I do for a living. I live for a living. Apparently, I'm taking care of myself. I got shoes on, shirt on. I'm not dirty. Okay, I'm standing before you. I got a car somewhere. I didn't just get here. I didn't hijack anything. Okay, and nor am I sitting in the passenger seat of my best friend's car. All right, there are two things that's going to happen, gentlemen. Either she's going to ride with you and be patient and you're going to get a chance to allow her to show you that she's interested in you because she's interested in you. OK, by you not telling her all your business. So she's with you because she just likes you as an individual. She's not concerned that you are either a plumber, a, uh, a cook. You're working at a fast food joint or you are working with some serious money. She don't need to know that. So you get a chance to begin the relationship off on a very good foot. Now you realize that she's not a gold digger. You realize she's not waiting for you to be her retirement plan. You set yourself up really nice. Now, if she listen, 
Here's two things that will happen thereafter. I said two, but actually three. One of them just happened. That's one thing that can happen that you want to happen. So there's your success right there. There's there's a good path. Okay. The second thing that might happen, she might keep asking you. She might, she might, uh, and it happens all the time. You'll be surprised how many times they do this. They've done that to me. They will ask you constantly. Every time they get a chance to. So you're not going to tell me what you do for a living. You're not going to tell me what you're going to do for a living. What do you do for a living? You're not going to tell me. How come you don't want to tell me? Why are you holding back the information? How come you don't want to tell me? You hiding something? What are you doing? You dope dealer? You sell? You criminal? What are you doing? She She's wanting to know because for that average woman, her information is her power. You're not giving her the power. Do you understand? She wants that power to turn right back on you. So therefore, she will know where you line up in her world. See, she wants to make or break you. Do you understand? She wants to be able to understand you so she can either keep you as a backup plan or she can pursue you very aggressively because she wants to get underneath your umbrella. You need to understand this, man. So she will keep asking you because you're not giving her the power. It's more irritating, if anything. When that happened to me, I really won't scream in her face and walk away. Okay, I'm talking about in the harsh, as harshest of ways. But because I'm not emotional, okay, I just have to lay the relationship down and disembowel all conversation and relationship and contact with this girl. Because I knew immediately what she was all about. Because she couldn't handle the fact that I kept to my business. Because you've got to know, men. You do not let these women know what you're getting ready to do or your future plans because she wants to be a part of it. And most times, I'm telling you now, it's not because she wants to help you build your kingdom. It's because she wants to eat off of your plate. Don't let her, don't give her the plate when you first meet her. You don't pull out your guns at first. You don't pull out everything that you have and say, this is all my cards, woman. Look at all the cards I got to play with. And now she knows how to play you all right so when that second thing happens that also lets you know that she is trying to get at you not in the most positive ways and she will use all type of shaming language she will try to come at you she will say that you're trying to hide something she'll say that you are ashamed of your career or of your life or whatever else she will try to make you feel very very small so you can get weak you can become a simp. You can jump off of your square and put your head on a Madame Goldum, whatever you call that, the Golatone, and allow that blade to come down right on your neck and finish you. That's what she wants you to do by shaming you. But you got to be strong and realize what her game is. Now, the third thing that can happen, and this one's one of my favorites. This should be one of your favorites. This is what brings the wake up call. This is what makes Morpheus, Morpheus, Mr. Neo. This is what makes the killer pill a very potent, concentrated killer pill. Listen, <laughs> when she immediately cuts you off, the moment you say, well, I live for a living, I will share that information with you later on as we get a chance to know each other. Let's just be friends first. Why should I have to tell you what I am or what if you know my name? That should be good enough. Hang out with me. Then uh, eventually uh, you will earn my trust. You will earn the right. You will learn. You will earn the privilege of getting a chance to know me a little bit more on a personal level. When this girl cuts off communication with you, when she recedes back into the shadow and she does not pursue you ever, ever, ever again. That means this woman was your assassin. This woman was the one who wanted to go from zero to 100 because she was looking for you. She came out of the crowd to find her a blue pill savior that she can murk on. She can parasite on immediately. And you immediately shut it down. You stopped her in her tracks by saying, uh-uh, I don't think so. 
You may have access to all the other blue pill simps in the world, but this ain't it over here. You know, save your princess sandals somewhere else, not here. Men, you will save yourself. You will begin to see exactly who she is. Now, let me tell you the mental games as well she will play, and I'm going to end this audio. Okay, and let this lesson be unto you. And women, this is not hate speech. I am only talking the facts. This is experience from a man who's been there, from a man who was in the thicket of the party and the one who is always, always being approached by these very women. And I have to deal with it. And I write it down and say, wow, the struggle is real. Oftentimes when there is a phone call between you and this girl, y'all begin texting. Okay. And let's just say, for example, you text her, you talk to her and there's no response. After your initial contact, after you talking, after you are just this mystery guy, women hate mystery, although it's fascinating to them. They want you to expose everything about yourself so they can use everything that's about you. You understand? But when you don't give them that rope for you, they have plans to dip out. They have plans to disappear and make it look like it's your fault. So what will happen is after you texting, you calling, she won't call you back. You think she ghosts you. Oh, uh, uh. there's a misconception in that as well. No, she's playing a game on you because you just might happen to see her again at the same place at a different time or you come across her at a store or you have to deal with her every day some kind of way or maybe one week or two weeks at a time and you meet her again and you ask a question let me tell you what they will say because I know they're going to say before they even say it it's exhausting to the point where it's just ridiculous you know I keep telling myself God needs to do a recall but apparently um, that prayer haven't reached the heavens yet so we just have to wait for the car to just completely destroy itself because it's made bad. What she would say is, or what you would say eventually in the conversation, you know, I did text and I did call last week. What happened to you? Or, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Listen, in the conversation, you'll begin to say, hey, you know, this is this, that, and that. I'm getting ready to go here. I'm getting ready to do this, blah, 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 blah. What happened to you? And what she will say is this. She will say, well, you haven't texted me lately or you haven't called lately. What happened to you? You'd be like, well, I haven't heard from you. She'll say, what happened to you? Try to turn the page on you, try to turn the script on you, try to make you feel as if you need to try harder. You need to call harder. You need to call 24 hours, seven days a week. You need to text every five minutes, even if she don't text back. That's right. She wants you to she wants you to chase her now. She wants to she wants to gain some type of power in your dynamic because you haven't been giving her any power. So she wants she wants something. She's scrondling for any chance possible for you to feel as if she is the goal and the riches that you already have. She's just a replacement of what? <laughs> what is she a replacement of that you can't do for yourself? Interesting. And so when she say, well, you know, you haven't called, you haven't text, most likely you probably already did. You text her probably that party night, that that day after you spoke. Or maybe you probably even called her, uh, you know, on a Monday. She's the one who haven't text back. She's the one who haven't called. And you know what she would say? Once you tell her that you did, once you tell her that she did, I'll tell you what she'll say. She'll say, well, I've just been, here we go. Men, listen, I've just been busy. I've been going through some things or uh, I'm just shy or just her big excuse is, well, I'm not good at texting back. I'm not good at phone calls. I'm taking care of my parents. I got I've been out of town. All these excuses, every excuse possible every excuse possible then to be accountable and say well I just did not want to text back I just did not want to call back 
Now, you have the smarty women that will get on this audio, who are the circle bubble tubbles who are uh, so classified in the indoctrination with the plaque on their forehead that would say, well, that was her specific sign to tell him that she just wasn't interested at all. When she didn't call back, that means she's not interested. She doesn't want to be interested in him. That's why she didn't call back. Excuse, 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 anything. Women work together like that. So it's kind of hard to uh, believe what, well, to trust what they say. Because they're the very ones who make excuse for unaccountability and reliability. Okay, because it's always going to be a bait and switch. It's always going to be a misunderstanding because it's never based on, okay, I'm sorry, I was wrong. You would never hear them say that or rarely unless there is a very extreme consequence. Whereas the whole village is burnt down and she's the only one standing there with a torch in her hand. Then she'll say, did I do that? I'm sorry. With a straight face. No, it's not just because she did not and wasn't interested in you is that she was interested in you she was hello she was defeated by you so she wants to keep you listen she wants to keep you in the hangar she wants to string you along she don't want to cut you off immediately because she has what what is it men hope she has hope that you will come around the corner that you will change your mind she has hope that you will continue to chase her when you see her again she has hope that somewhere along the line instead of just saying i don't want to call back because i'm not interested in you as you would think a simple person should and be honest right be a woman about it don't they tell us to be a man about it be a woman about it say i'm not interested goodbye right can't do that because she realizes that you have worth so she's rather just not call back to what's that put a question mark on your head to make you concerned to make you wonder so when you meet again instead of you understanding that she don't want to be with you at all she wants to keep that door open just in case and play the game on you and render herself just a little bit more advantage should you allow yourself to be taken advantage of what you want to know what blue pill beta doctrinated guys cannot understand that at all never will they'll go along with it they'll listen to the dating coaches they will chase until their whole day is blue and they'll find no success they'll get their parasite I mean woman They'll get their friend, okay, I mean, a pretender or frenemy, whatever you want to call it, and eventually the marriage will go along 14, 15, 16, 17 years, and guess what? Divorce. So you got to understand that the, the seed is not going to immediately sprout. The seed starts when you first meet them. The seed starts when you blind yourself with your indoctrination. When you are willing to say, well, it's never my problem. I am so prestige. I am the boss of my corporation. I got everything to, I can buy my way. Okay. All right. All right. Tell that to all the famous people back in 1920. I mean, not 1920, but 2019, 2020. Tell them who's been divorced after 14, 15, 10 years. Tell them the same thing that you say that you, that you got it right. You got the golden chalice that you are invincible to it. And she'll still find a way, okay, to get what she want out of you in the end. Because you didn't realize that you are the prize. That you should have been taking care of yourself instead of chasing. You should have been aware that there are loopholes in the system. That there are systems underneath the system that doesn't want to see your way through. But as long as you play the game that's already rigged, you're going to lose the game because the game is not made for you to win. It's made for you to be blinded and deceived. I'm going to stop this audio log right here. Because Neo, I still have more for you. Since you are sharing me, you are liking me. You are promoting my voice. You are supporting my book, 2020 America Rise or Fall Hard. 
you are keeping this energy going. So I will always keep this red pill going strong. Until every man and some woman indeed, this ain't a biased channel, and women learn and get stronger and do better than what we have done before. For this isn't about gender as you may think it is. This isn't a hardcore red peel channel that is all one sided. No, because I understand there are men who are blue pill beta that is choking the world to death. They are the reasons why a lot of women go wayward and they know they're wrong, but they get away with it. What child, listen, what child a person uh, would not take free gifts and a complete path, okay, before them, that's just given to them. I mean, who would deny being praised to do wrong, even if they know it's wrong? Who would deny that? And they can do whatever they want to do, even if it's at a disadvantage of other people. But some men really don't realize this. So if anything, women and some men, it's more of a reprimand to men who just want to be, yeah, I am a, I am a, uh, uh, I'm a corporate head and I make like, uh, you know, 45, something like that a year. I make like three million a year. Yeah, I got a Porsche sitting outside and I got a Ferrari. So you want to ride with me, girl? And get themselves trampled all over. And then they come to the doctors, they come to the psychologist, then they come to me, Morpheus, and say, I can't find me a good woman. Can you help me? Because I'm so smart. I'm spilling all my beans and have nothing left for my thought. I am so indoctrinatedly intelligent because of this. Wrong, buddy. Wrong. You got to realize that there is a different world under the world that you are in, that your space bubble is only for you to be a good student. It's only for you to be a good pawn for the government. It's only so you can work well in the indoctrination system in your, uh, <laughs> your country. It has nothing to do with that ticker that you got in your head. That ticker requires wisdom and it requires instincts, okay, that your books cannot comply to your life. Your experience and your awareness, your consciousness and your connection to the universe is the only thing that can do that. And to do it, you got to realize that there are other sides of the river that are even more important and more serious, okay, than the prizes, gifts and the made up success that people are putting in front of you. The first, the things that they put in front of your face aren't usually the things that given are good for you are going to get you where you need to be. It's usually the things that are out of reach. It's usually the things that are on the other side that seems to be uh, a misunderstanding, that seems to be wrong, that seems to be corroded, that that is given a false image, are painted ugly. It's painted ugly and it's not attractive on purpose. So you will not be attracted to it because that is the very thing that is for you. Then that which is colored in gold and plaques and trophies that's right before your feet at ease so at ease soldier this is Leon C at ease aka Morpheus more power to wisdom in this day